continuing with the fire agate. This is like one of my favorite pieces. And I keep seeing it in the tray. So it must be for me. You know, it's sometimes when you're surrounded in so many crystals and you're a collector, <laughs> they seem to come home in your pocket sometimes. So this is fire agate from Mexico. And these ones are part polished to bring out the fire that's hidden underneath. You can see that shine. It's almost a botroidal rounded bubble inside. And here you got some botroidal action, which just means a rounded geometric formation. So you got the natural raw and the polish to bring out the fire. It's almost like micro little rainbows inside. Mm. Really nice people that we get these from. Uh, we have a nice stock uh, right now, but you never know. Uh, these types of things, you know, to get quality like this, um, sometimes it's hard. So we don't have, we haven't had fire agate in a while, and then we just got a nice batch in. Here you can see the, the fire agate really going through, 1894. We do have pieces that are just completely raw, like this, that's not been polished. A fraction of the price point. Pieces like this, some people will polish, you know, like right here. They'll do some polishing. And then we have your cabochons. Fully polished pieces. So fire agate is, of course, you're in your agate family, your um, quartz silicon dioxide material. But because of all the impurities or trace elements, giving it these beautiful rainbow qualities and the growth pattern, it helps to bring things to the surface. But you have to kind of dig a little under the surface to expose it. So that would be true for personalities that you know need a little fire need a little bit more a little push a little nurture to bring out you know anything fire element is good to uh, get the movement going get the juices flowing get the fire under the butt good for action expression creativity and seeing things with a new appreciation, a new light. Here's one more. You know, crystals and stones help you, you know, look in a new way, to see things in a new way, to appreciate and look deeper at what is. And then we have some agate stones like this, just some nice little simple tumbled ones, kind of a combination of agates and jaspers. These ones are from India. We try to have many, many tumbled stones. I think we have at least 200 varieties of tumbled stones in the store. And then moving to petrified wood. I'll show it in its natural state first. Here's an, a nice uh, chunk, two chunks from Arizona. These particular pieces, we have limited stock. This was a kind of a, a fun find, very inexpensive pieces. But you can see the almost agatizing quality. So like here's the petrified part of it. And then once it gets this smoother texture, usually more inside the stone, it starts to become agate. And it's pulling on all the minerals of the petrified wood. And as it ages and matures, kind of like fine wine, that it creates a more agate, agatizing specimen.
and it gets harder and harder as the time goes on. And then you get a lot of beautiful colors that express themselves as the maturity happens through the stone's absorption and concentration of minerals. So that for us, working in that way, it helps to act in a sense of maturing us and to pull on our resources and to see and use what is around us and within us to mature and to grow into that fine wine. So these slabs are from Indonesia, polished on usually one or two sides. This one's just raw on that side. Usually this is either palm root Lots of different colors. So petrified wood is also, since it's a tree root or a tree itself, that you're working with ancient wisdom of the planet, of the forest, of living organisms, to be rooted, to work with that ancient wisdom, to ground yourself, but also to see into the past. Here are some tumbled stones of the palm root from Indonesia. I love like the contrast of colors. And then some a larger gorgeous slice from Indonesia. I mean, here you just got, you got everything. It's just so pretty. And this is agatized. It's a very, very firm, much harder than petrified wood in the early stages of um, petrification. Great for your water bottles as a charging plate. It's lovely to see all the colors that it expresses. And then larger tumbles. These are Madagascar. And then you'll have petrified wood that has the tans and the softer colors. And then sometimes you'll see the beautiful grains, the grain that it has. So if you love trees, definitely need some petrified wood in your life. All right, next we're going into aragonite. So star aragonite is like super fun, very uh, multidimensional. Kind of reminds me of uh, Superman in the city. I think it was Superman Returns where this type of structure is growing out of the water from the crystal. So aragonite is in the calcium uh, carbonate family. They also exhibit this, they call it a star because it's growing out in each, every direction. It's like individual crystals, one big happy family, a harmonious family. Now in one of the books, when I was doing more healing work, the, uh, I think in the Book of Stones, it talks about this is a healer's tool. And when you're working with it, having it as a pendant, I had uh, wire wrapped a piece, helping you to tune in and feel and connect with another person's energy while you're doing healing work. And I can see part of that reason being because each of these crystals is moving out in every direction, and it's a physical oriented mineral that works with the physical body. It's helping to ground yourself to be more in tune with your physical nature and 
having that expression of energy out in every direction amplifies and strengthens your aura as the energy moves out. And then we have your aragonite tumbled. Has a bit of that kind of red root chakra type of energy, kind of moving more into the sacral as well. So a very good physical strengthening stone. Anything to do with uh, immune disorders, your, any sort of healing work on a physical nature, any of the aragonites and calcites are great to work with. We have some aragonite hearts as well. You got some of that layer going on. Sometimes onyx and aragonite uh, kind of cross over and share some similar mineral aspects. And another one of my favorites is the Venatonite. So here you have, oh, look at that, some barite. These are Venatonites always from, pretty much always, I think there might be a couple exceptions, from Morocco. So the barite, I think it's easier to show on this one, are these layers, this kind of white to orangey crystal. You can see all those layers there. And the vanadonite tends to grow either on top, inside of it, around it, through it. And in this particular case, it's like a druzy microcrystals growing all on top. And here it's also an encrusted. So you got the vanadonite, but then also a secondary growth layer, uh, probably like a druzy quartz growing on top, or it could be calcite. So I'll put those two to the side and show another small specimen that has the clear visibility of the vanadonite crystals growing right on top so cute and the barite so vanadonite exhibiting that red rich spectrum has a quality of working with the uh, sacral and the movement of the sexuality and the creativity the inspiration and uh, having a, a little bit more structure with your creativity some geometrics because when i show you the next piece you'll see why so you're working with that rich rich beautiful red orangey tones and it's also in the mineral vanadium so it has a really nice weight to it so there's a security to it, a uh, comfort to it. But you have this beautiful crystallization of the geometry to them. So, like I said earlier, anything with geometric expression is going to help you work with and bring that into your life to become more structured. We all need a little structure once in a while. So if you're a creative person, but have a hard time with facilitating a project, getting creating something on a larger level, then Vanadonite might be a stone to check out. And a fun kind of thing I read was about spending habits. If you have a hard time spending too much money, then this helps to bring more awareness to your spending habits. So you got to buy the stone, so then you're aware of your spending habits. <laughs> but here's an amazing example of a cluster. Cluster just meaning 
many, many crystals growing together. So pretty. So the two pieces to give example that I showed are 62 because they're more specimen grade and then the smaller one was 36. This particular piece is 99. And then, you know, pieces like this, where was the sticker? 1199, probably like eight or nine. So vanadinite is something that we uh, find in batches. You know, and if you ever have any curiosities with stones that we have, just definitely give a call to the store. And we'll do our best to help you out in finding what you need. And sometimes we may have it in stock. We have at least 420 varieties of stones in the store. And if we don't have it, we will definitely try to find it. So next we have another stone that tends to be a little bit more on the rarer side, called Credite. And uh, we're a little low on stock at the moment, but I wanted to find a couple examples to show you. It's like, let's see, I think this one is a little better example. It's almost like a, an explosion, like a star explosion, similar to the star Aragonite, but with finer crystals. And it's definitely a little bit delicate. It's in the calcium family as well with uh, some other trace elements. Some of them are clear, and then you can get orangey minerals like this, a little bit more clay. Sometimes they're even purple as well. A lot of these do come from the Mexico area, South America. And the energy I get from these is literally just like an expansion. Um, a lot of people will talk about like upper higher awareness or high vibration. Sometimes you'll also find fluorite growing with it. A lot of specimens tend to grow in like more of a round ball like structure. Looks like quartz, but it's not. But yeah, I really like this guy. He's so cute. So working with this in a meditation, helping to activate your third eye, the crown chakra, and any sort of need to expand yourself to into more than what you are. A lot of us only operate within a certain energy out, output. So working with Credite will expand that output and help you tune into and use more of your own potential by that expansion process. So also for a healer to expand into the field of energy that you're working with and the clients you're working with, this could be helpful as well. Get a good close up there. So next, moving into carnelian, one of our favorites for the sacral chakra. And first, I want to show off some raw pieces, the natural stuff. So here is completely natural river tumbled, but the pattern in it is just so cool. A lot of bubbly effects, lots of layers and movement and creativity within it. Of course, it is a fire mineral fire energy that is going to stimulate the sacral chakra, the movement, the sexuality, the passion, the vibrance. Here's a nice just little raw nugget. So because it is in the agate family, also known in ancient terms as sardonyx, the uh, sardonyx tends to have a little bit more black and some layers than the Carnelian, but here you can see these nice layers here. A little bit of red tone in it. Some of the best carnelian uh, in the world comes from Madagascar. 
Here's another just natural raw piece. This is less carnelian, but kind of in the family, because predominantly carnelian has to have that red tone. So here's a Madagascar piece. So you can really see the translucency, the layers. There you go. It's juicy, fiery, yumminess. So if you need to get the movement going, the action, the creativity, the sexuality, the, uh, the passion, vibrance, then carnelian, and for a lot of people, um, you know, some people are naturally fiery. So they do not need carnelian. <laughs> they might need something more water element related like blue calcite or blue chalcedony. But most people need uh, some carnelian in their life. So within the uh, sacral chakra for fertility, the three best stones working together is your carnelian, your Shiva lingam stone, which is right next to me, and then also garnet for the root chakra. So these three working together are going to really stimulate and balance that area of reproductive cycles. You know, if you have a, for women, an imbalance in your flow, then carnelian is going to be a great one to bring out the balance and get and stimulate that energy center. So here's some slices from Madagascar. You can see kind of nice natural edge. I was really happy to find these because usually you just see them in just either raw form, tumbled, palm stones like this, but to get slices, I was really excited about. These are just absolutely gorgeous. They're see-through, beautiful layers, uh, great to lay right on the sacral chakra itself. Every most people, I don't say everyone, but most people needs a little fire in their life. I know there's moments if you feel sluggish, also good for immune system, uh, immune boosting, moving the fire within the body. Of course, if you have an overactive thyroid. I would say be careful of the carnelian and fire elements. But if you have low metabolism, uh, losing weight, then definitely working with the fire elements. I just love the translucent colors. So pretty. So carnelian is definitely our top go-to for the sacral chakra, balancing and harmonizing. And then we also have some cute little merkabas as well. Carnelian will always have in-house, um, but the types of styles and shapes will always vary, but always guarantee to have carnelian.